بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله او صحابه الجميع اللهم صل على حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الاولين وصل اللهم وصل وبارك على حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الاخرين اللهم صل على حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كل ما ذكره ذاكر من بعض كل ما غفر منك الغافلون وكم الحمد لله تو ار open q a uh, there's a lot of people that had questions uh, so we wanted to open, give this an opportunity for just the legacy institute uh, supported al bayt guest uh, hajj packages uh, to ask your questions inshallah before you ask uh, they're all going to be written so please if you have any questions uh, make sure that you uh, write them down um, inshallah and we will answer uh, as many as we can uh, we will be uh, inshallah starting to send out uh, a uh, PDF of your itinerary and some details on your uh, trip. Uh, we are still, inshallah, waiting for the uh, official Abay guests' um, arrival PDF, which is extremely detailed in terms of what you should do upon arrival. Uh, we are, inshallah, going to be also sending the rest of the Getting Ready for Hajj videos, inshallah, as our um, uh, webinars on them have been wrapping up. So we want to make sure that the webinars are wrapped up so that when you listen to the Getting Ready for Hajj videos, they're the snippets of that. Uh, there will also be um, information sent about uh, just generally in Mecca and Medina, for example, places to shop uh, and things like that. Um, and we will also include uh, uh, information with regards to uh, anything related to uh, if there's an emergency, what you should do. Uh, we will include that as well. So if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to ask. Uh, we're going to be taking written questions only just to make sure that uh, we have the ability to respond. So uh, you're more than welcome to write it down in the chat. All right, so Brother Ruan, do we need to fill out any additional form for custom flight regarding the flight information? You're inshallah getting into Medina on June 10th before the group arrival. And wondering if we will be met by someone and if you're okay to check in the hotel before a group arrives, will our flight status be checked for delays? Okay, so uh, al bayt guests, inshallah ta'ala, will uh, allow you to input your information for custom flights via the Rafiq app. They're working on it now, so uh, they will have all that information. You yourself will uh, have the opportunity to update it on the Rafiq app. We will also um, be sending um, a form for our own records, uh, but we don't want to do that to make you do multiple things. So you're like, well, I already did it, so Rafiq app. So if the Rafiq app already has done it, then we don't need to send an, a, a, a form, but we're going to wait for that, inshallah. Uh, are you going to be met somebody? I, I, let me just go over the arrival um, uh, process now in an, in an overview so that you can, uh, inshallah, uh, understand the arrival process. So I'll do this in two sections. I'm going to talk about the custom flight people first because theirs are the most complicated. So first and foremost, when people arrive on a custom flight, there are one of a number of situations. You're either going to arrive on a custom flight in a city that's not your destination city, meaning you're arriving in Jeddah, you need to go to Medina. Or you're arriving in your destination city, okay? So let's talk about arrival in your destination city. You arrive in Medina, uh, it's very simple. You've either transited from uh, Riyadh or you've transited from Jeddah. So if you're transiting, uh, you may have to pick up your own bags at Jeddah and then recheck them in at the domestic airlines. You you may not be charged for that, of course, because it was one ticket, but you still have to pick up physically your own bags. This is very important. This will be detailed in that uh, PDF that I sent you all. So then when you're uh, shifting to the domestic terminal, because it's not sometimes the same terminal, you're going to be arriving in one of two terminals, either the King Abdulaziz Airport terminal in Jeddah, uh, or you're going to be arriving in the Hajj terminal in Jeddah. So either way, you have to switch to the domestic airlines terminal. Keep that in mind. So you're going to switch to domestic airlines terminal, recheck your bags or place your bags on the area where you need to essentially place them. You don't need to get in line. You basically already have uh, them um, tagged. So they will direct you just like normal travel, et cetera, to, 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 to do that. Uh, inshallah, that's on you to make sure that you pick up your bags, get on the shuttle to uh, go there. There will be an al -Bayt guest's desk, a help desk, to direct you and al -Bayt guests uh, staff at the uh, places if they're uh, essentially taking a shift to make sure that you arrive. But if you do not see them, don't look for the al -Bayt guest people. Continue on your travel to essentially uh, simply transfer via the normal airport shuttle. There is no such thing as an al -Bayt guest continuous shuttle for custom flights. You must travel, inshallah, as normal to get to your domestic uh, terminal. Uh, as per the uh, the the airport shuttle, 
get into the plane of the domestic airlines. And then when you arrive, uh, inshallah, at the uh, airport in Medina, from Jeddah, from Riyadh, whatever the situation, there will be Al, al Bayt guests who have your information and they will transport you. Either it will be via bus or either it will be via uh, private taxi, depending on uh, if, you if there's people there additionally uh, on that flight or landing at the same time and so on and so forth. Uh, if you, that's for domestic airlines. If you are landing and you do not have domestic airlines, you're landing in Jeddah, you need to go to Medina. You have one of a few options. Al Bayt guests will uh, have that information that you will input, as I mentioned. They will then uh, uh, direct you to the Al Bayt guests uh, bus that will bus you to Medina. Uh, and uh, inshallah, that's the simple, straightforward process. There's a, a, a big guest number if you don't see them. So you will have contact. We're also there for you. That's the whole purpose. of We're going to be in contact with you, inshallah. Uh, and uh, you will then be bust. If you don't want to do that, you can upgrade by getting your own personal taxi. Al big guest will not be uh, you know, get, flagging down taxis for you. You simply just exit the airport. And there's a bunch of taxis going to Medina. You pay them their price. And you move on forward, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, you go to straight to the hotel via private taxi. If there are no buses, Al Bayt guests will, be, will get you a private taxi. For example, you came at a time when there's no other buses, no other guests uh, and pilgrims, then they will get you a private taxi. But other than that, you must upgrade on your own and get a private taxi. Or if you want to upgrade by getting a train. So many of you asked, well, how long should I have between that? First of all, a minimum of three hours to get through the customs and and, 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 uh, and immigration and get your bags and all of this other stuff and then make your way to the train station ahead of time, uh, a minimum of three hours. And then in addition to that, that transfer, uh, you, wanna, uh, you want to calculate. Could it go faster? Yes, it could go much faster. Do we have any kind of uh, uh, timing for that? No, we don't. Hence why we're giving you this time limit because it could be much less. It could be, uh, could be you know, hamda within that time. So we want to be safe. Uh, inshallah. Uh, so then you go to the train station. Now here's an important note that is uh, going to be clarified with Al-Bayt. Uh, inshallah, when you arrive in the train station, there are no Al-Bayt guest staff at the train station. We are working diligently now to see if there's a mechanism for Al-Bayt to transfer you from the train station to the hotel. But you may, you may need to get a taxi from the train station to the hotel. We will clarify this, but I'm telling you already now, inshallah, we will let you know. Um, because the al -Bayt guests uh, on the ground staff are in the, are in the airports. So having someone constantly 24-7 in the train stations is going to be uh, a, a bit of a logistical problem. So they're figuring this out and we will they will let us know, inshallah. Uh, and of course, we'd love to, to cater to you to make sure to give you the best of service in terms of that. So we'll let you know. Uh, so this is with regards to the custom flights, with regards to if you're arriving in the uh, airport that you're transiting in, meaning Jeddah or Riyadh, uh, and then you're going to be going to Medina via domestic uh, airlines or you're landing in Jeddah and you're going via bus or you're going via a uh, private car or you're going via uh, train that you've upgraded on those last two yourself. Now, uh, with regards to check-in in the hotels, know that the check-in at the hotels is at 6 p.m. This is what it's uh, official. Does that mean that you will not be able to do it beforehand? Possibly you can. I'll be guess will, of course, try to get the, you the the hotel rooms as earliest as possible. If the hotel room is available, then come to that great. If it's not available, keep that in mind. You will be allowed to place your bags in the of course concierge, just like any hotel. And then inshallah, you can spend time in uh, Masjid al Nabawi. Uh, you know, rest there. Uh, get get you know money exchanging and all this other stuff. You can liaise with your hotel guide. You can do a million things. You know, rest up and get food and all these other things until you're checking. Inshallah. All right. Uh, this goes similarly for those landing in Jeddah and going to uh, Mecca. So the check-in time is later. Therefore, you must you must wait uh, until the check-in time uh, and then you can leave with your Hajj guide and all this other stuff. Hence why, as you all know, these Telegram groups are so, so important. Uh, I hope that this answered your question. Uh, my brother is one. If it has not, please follow up. Okay. Uh, and if we are okay to check into the hotel before our group arrives, you're you're okay to check into the hotel as long as it's your time to check in. So, if your group has not arrived and it's it's at six p.m., you're more than welcome to check in. Just get the 
the uh, Hajj guide or Al Bayt guest uh, staff, inshallah ta'ala, that will uh, direct you. Uh, but other than that, yeah, as long as it's within the check-in time. Um, this leads me to an important side note, which is an extremely important issue with regards to SIMs. A lot of people keep asking me about eSIMs and uh, our admin have been uh, being asked about eSIMs. There's no eSIMs in Saudi Arabia. So you are responsible for doing one of two things. Number one, you update your international plan on whatever your service is internationally, T-Mobile, AT&T, whatever it is. And they have an international plan for one month gives you uh, high speed uh, internet, inshallah, like I believe uh, 4G or 5G or whatever. And uh, it will give you international calling. This works pretty good. It does have some times where it's not, you know, functioning sometimes well. Uh, that's just how things are. I'm not a uh, T-Mobile or Verizon or at and uh, you know, service provider. So I don't know how well it works, but I do use one of them. I'm not going to tell you which one because it's not a promotion. But the idea is uh, it works, alhamdulillah, pretty, pretty good. Uh, and it, it has international calling for free. Uh, so this is one option that you can use. And you just, you save the big headaches with regards to SIMs or whatever. And alhamdulillah, the, the price is negligible, like $50 a month or something along those lines. Uh, you can also, when you arrive, like we said, when you arrive, uh, you know, do you have international plan uh, to uh, text message on very, like, uh, uh, not as fast internet? Some internet providers already uh, provide that. So if you travel, for example, with some X. um Inter uh, phone company, they already give you international planning, but it's at very slower speed. It's not at the high speed. So you can you can basically make way by sending messages uh, until you um, get your SIM. When do you get your SIM? When you get to the hotel and you've settled into the hotel and then the heads guy tells you, this is how we're going to get the SIM. You get the SIM, you activate the SIM, you put uh, data on the SIM and then you use the SIM. So again, up to you all what you want to do, but this is how the process will be. You must, and I will repeat this 100 times, we will send this inshallah as well, you must have access to internet. No one can come to Hajj and I'm being minimal and you know I'm getting away from my phone. No, Habib, you can get away from your phone, meaning you're not going to scroll on it. But as far as you need to be connected is an extremely important thing because of multiple reasons. Number one, we are actually going to be uh, streaming many of our, uh, of our uh, announcements, of our lectures, of our walking tours are going to be streamed via the Telegram live cast. So you can actually hear and listen. We don't have the transmitting services, the best transmitting services, the Telegram live cast. Uh, for those of you who might get sick and you still want to hear the lecture, this is a golden opportunity. Uh, SubhanAllah, you can listen to it while you're in your room because you're sick. You you can't make it. It's a, it's a, it's a huge, alhamdulillah, help. That's why we're using Telegram for that reason. So uh, that's my uh, spiel and uh, my harping on the uh, Sims. We will not accept someone that comes and says, I don't have a phone that uses the SIM. Please get one. Please get one. This is Hajj. This is a very serious matter. Emergency situations can come forward, et cetera, and so on and so forth. There are some of you that are, are, are translating for your families. Uh, they don't speak English. Uh, so you please, you must be able to give them somehow a um, way to communicate, understand the communications that we're uh, providing, we don't provide translation services on our own unless I speak Arabic. A few of the other guys speak Arabic. Some of them speak Bengali. Some of them speak Urdu. But they're not going to be dedicated to you to translate an entire lecture in that language. This is not possible. So one of the ways that we've done is we're opening the Telegram live cast so even a family member back home can hear and listen and then translate it to their uh, member of their family that is uh, go going to be on the ground. This is one, one of the easiest ways we can do this. Or like I said, if there's people who are from that uh, particular language in the group, they can uh, they can find them and inshallah help each other in that regard. But this is not something that is within our capacity to bring uh, multi multilingual uh, translation services uh, at the same time. It's not possible. It's not possible. We let the, the no, of course catering to the judge at the highest level is what we will do. But inshallah, what is what is within our capabilities? Next question: Do you have any uh, plan to send us the rooming list? The Rafiq app already has that. If you log into the Rafiq app, Salam, please clarify. After Muzalifa, do we stone the Jamarat first, then perform Tawaf in Mecca or vice versa? We'll be giving you, uh, again, the Getting Ready for Hajj series will incorporate uh, a detail of the of the fiqh of Umrah, uh, inshallah. It already has been discussed in the chronology of Hajj webinar. Uh, so all you need to do is just listen to that lecture. It'll tell you exactly what the chronology of Hajj is in a very simple, straightforward video. So that's why it's there. Please listen to it. We don't do this for fun. We're doing it for your benefit, inshallah. So it's fun for us, but also that you listen to it is even more fun to me. It makes me feel good. Uh, so that's number one. 
Number two, uh, after Muzdalifa, yes, you will collect the stones in Muzdalifa, 49 of them. If you're going to be staying 12 days, an additional 21 uh, to those uh, 49 if you're staying to the 13th. The vast majority of us are staying to the 12th already, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and then, inshallah, you will uh, uh, first uh, stone the Jamarat, which will be af uh, on the day of Eid in the morning. So we leave Muzdalifa uh, for the vast majority, and they will stone the Jamarat. Uh, then, um, inshallah, uh, you will cut your hair after uh, the sacrifice has been done for you, and it has been done for you if you've already done it with Nusuk. Uh, in that essence, uh, for those of you who are going to uh, be getting the legacy hadith, uh, we will let you know when the sacrifice has been done. So it's up to you if you want to wait to preserve an order. Uh, some of you maybe follow the madhab that allows you to that says for you to preserve the order of the uh, rites, the Hajj rites. This is specific to the Hanafi Madhab in some instances. Uh, our view is the following. You just need to do uh, the stoning of the uh, of the shaitan and you can cut your hair. Okay? If you want to follow the sunnah, which, is, which means it's not an incumbent, it's not an obligation, it's recommended, then those who, uh, who bought a Legacy Institute Hadi, we will tell you exactly when that uh, sacrifice is done. In fact, we will tell you exactly when the sacrifice starts. Not only just done, we will tell you it is now being done. And then inshallah, it'll, we will tell you when it's done. You may have to wait a little bit because of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of people, animals, things like that. They will tell you when all the group is done, inshallah, for those of you who did that sacrifice. And then you can, inshallah, in those uh, time, just relax, etc. And when the sacrifice is done, then you can uh, cut or, or shave your hair, inshallah ta'ala. And uh, in this regard, you will follow the sunnah according to the view that we hold of following the order as the Prophet Muhammad did. But again, the view of our of our uh, institute is that you can do uh, two uh, uh, of those rites, and and uh, inshallah, you'll be out of uh, ihram to cut your hair, uh, to sh cut or shave your hair, which means if you stone the jamarat, and then you can shave your hair, there's no problem in doing so. It does not need to be via the order. This is the view of the majority, um, inshallah. Then you can perform tawaf of ifada. Uh, inshallah for those of you who are doing tamattu uh, and uh, of course uh, for those doing who Quran as well you do tawaf al ifada uh, inshallah and then you do sa'i for hajj it can be done on the 10th it can be done on the 11th and even can be done on the 12th which we don't recommend we want you to do it earlier uh, so then the discussion of when that will be will be with your hajj guide for those of you who want to go right away then you, you will have buses inshallah to take you with Saudi Airlines, will there be a window of time where we can select seats before check the day uh, before check in the day of the flight? Uh, as far as we've been told, yes. So you need to go early if you want to um, select seats, uh, because for some reason Saudi Airlines is one of the only airlines that we're dealing with that are not allowing uh, booking seats uh, ahead of time. Turkish Airlines has, and so does Emirates Airlines. Uh, Qatar Airlines as well, but we for some reason are, are, are getting the news that Saudi Airlines has a policy that you will not be able to assign seats. So just go early. Go early to assign those seats, inshallah. Hopefully get your seats. Salam, does the guy take care of our passports or do we leave them in the hotel safe? Uh, it depends on where you are. Uh, if you're arriving in Medina, the passports will be taken from an Al-Bay guest representative uh, with the Hajj Ministry. Uh, so the Hajj Ministry will basically take those uh, passports and then give it back to you when you're going on the train to, to Mecca. So if you're arriving in Medina, this is the case. And if you're arriving in Jeddah, uh, I've been told that they're just going to scan. Why are they taking it? They, they need to scan and make sure that they're accounted for, the Hajjahs that have arrived. And then they will give it back to the company, al bayt guest, and then hand it out on those buses, inshallah ta'ala, that you've been allocated. So it's not like, oh, I didn't get my friend who's on the other bus. So I'm going to, inshallah, go on the other bus to just be with my friends. You must be on the same bus for that journey to the train station, inshallah ta'ala. That you're allocated. Maybe the bus number will change later. We'll tell you. But the bus number that's been given to you, it's for that reason. So I hopefully that answer that question. Salam alaikum. What phone number should be used while registering for the Rafiq app? Does that phone number need to be reachable for OTPs on your recommendation? Preferably. Don't give a, a phone number that you don't have access to. Um, no, you will not need uh, necessary access to that phone number in Saudi Arabia. So, like, say, for example, you put in a number 
and then that number is not accessible in Saudi Arabia, uh, is that is that something that is going to be a problem or it's not? Uh, you know, preferably at least someone has access to that phone number because you also put emergency contacts. Uh, but as you know, all of you will have, inshallah, uh, access to Telegram. You must have access to Telegram while in Saudi Arabia. So one of the ways is to just keep it on your phone. And then when you change SIMs, even, it doesn't matter. You don't need to register a new phone number into the Telegram. You don't need to do that. All right. It'll just be on your phone with uh, with another number. But the Telegram will still be the number that you that you uh, put. For men, is there a penalty for placing a bandage on feet due to blister injury? Um, bandage. I do believe so. One moment, please. I'll get back to you, inshallah. This is a good question. I do believe so, since you're covering, you're covering it with something. But again, it's not, it's uh, it's not being wrapped, so I think it should be okay. It's not considered clothing. I don't think uh, it, it is because it's different from a cast. I'll get back to you on this one, inshallah, because uh, right now I'm not thinking of it. That's a good question. There's a bandage for a blister to injury. Do you need to pay figya? Allahu alam. We're going to get back to you, inshallah. Mahat. What about uh, we are arriving in Riyadh via Dubai to Medina. Do you need to pick up luggage from Riyadh? Yes, you do. You need, uh, you need to pick up your luggage on international flights and then put them back again to the domestic baggage drop-off area. Good question. Do we keep our passports or our take? We already answered this. Salam, our destination is, is Jeddah. Will they collect our passport? Is, uh, again, in Jeddah, they will not uh, collect their passports. Only in Medina, the passports are going to be collected. Will there be an opportunity to take a side trip in Medina to the date orchard that was planted by Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad and the Sahaba? Or is that a crazy idea during the season of Hajj? You will be able to do so if you want, inshallah. Uh, we may actually visit that on our bus tour. We may. If we don't, we'll tell you where it is and you can, inshallah, go. So for the bus tours, we, we, we may do that. But if not, then we will tell you where it is. It's not crazy. Other people are going to. It's uh, not crazy for them. Will we find our, uh, when will we find our roommates? I already told you in the Rafiqa. We have not received our group flight e-tickets. I tried to call the airlines on Nusuk, but neither have been able to answer my concerns. How our names appear in Nusuk website versus our passport. The Nusuk added our father names in between our first and last name. Taymur, please message the admin directly. Uh, TLI admin. Uh, did you get... You have not received your group flight to e-ticket, so you have not. So just message the TLI admin, please, so that we can deal with this. What is the penalty if you wear a mask in ihram? Then again during Hajj, a mask in ihram, if you want to wear it for preventative reasons or because you are sick, is up to you. But you still must pay a penalty, okay? Uh, and that penalty is for the fact that you are doing something that is not okay for you to do in ihram. That has nothing to do with uh, a necessity or not a necessity. If you wear a mask, you must pay a penalty. What is the penalty? It's called fiyat adha. Which means you have a choice between, for covering your face, you have a choice between uh, feeding six uh, poor people in Mecca or uh, fasting three days. It can be doesn't have to be in Hajj. It can be when you go back home. Or uh, sacrificing a sheep. Okay, sacrificing a sheep. So you have a choice to do one of those three and you can do it in Mecca and your Hajj guide will direct you where to pay, inshallah ta'ala, when you're there. But you must pay figya. So if you want to do it, you must pay. Is it possible to give flights tickets on Turkish Airlines from Chicago for medical reasons? As far as I know, no, as of right now. If you go early and you ask them, then you can, inshallah ta'ala. But we have already uh, uh, put this up with the, uh, the Turkish Airlines representative, and they said no. And they said the Hajj group, we told you that they, they did not uh, allow us. So this has been checked upon. Uh, and they did not allow us. We're okay with even partial upgrade. Yes, I know. They did not allow us. So uh, uh, this can be done at the check-in, inshallah, Tata. We hope that there's space for you. 
using other gel, but they would not allow us. How will food be managed at Mina so we can handle our medications accordingly? Uh, food is three times a day in Mina. And I, oh, I believe it's, a, it's an open buffet. Food, uh, food or meals are cooked three times. Are you expected to walk from Mina to Arafat? Depends on your package, uh, Korea. I don't know what your package is. Actually, I can find what your package is in one bit. The package is sixty thousand. So you are in Medjad of Kepsh in C two thousand, so you are not going to be walking at all from in out of fashion anyway. Uh, I misread the question, so I'm laughing because uh, I thought you meant from Mina to uh, to uh, from your Mina camps to the stoning of the Shaytan. Uh, you are not, none of this is required. I am asking because I am hearing the buses take some time and people generally walk. Uh, yes, the buses do take time, take time, and uh, but it's definitely much more comfortable. You are not going by bus, Sister Korea. You're going by train. For those who are in Medjur al Kapsh. They're going to be going through the train. Now you have to wait for the train. Then you have to get on the train. And when you're on the train, it's about a 20-minute journey between these places, 15, 10 minutes, uh, and 20 minutes from Arafat to, to Mina, uh, inshallah. So remember, that process is, is, a, is a process. Leaving Arafat to go to Muzdalifa, to go, wait in line, get on the train, get off of Muzdalifa, go to, yeah, that takes a process for you. Those who are, inshallah, going via bus uh, from uh, those who are in the Mu'aisim camp, they're going to go door to door. So they get on a bus, go to Arafat. Get on a bus, go to Muzdarifa. Yes, it takes some time. Uh, but one of the problems is that if you walk, you're on your own in the sense of where you're going. What, you know, like Geo satellite is not going to work. It's not like Google Maps is perfectly designed for Mina roads. The road could be closed and you have to go walk all the way back. So all of these things, just keep in mind um, that it is it is a part of the navigation uh, process. Some of you, uh, mashallah, in the groups are like, who wants to be the walking group and whatever? <laughs> May Allah bless you in your adventurousness, okay? If you've done this before, great. You have some experience and you're a veteran. Uh, inshallah, for those of you who want to do this, please, please, please. This is like 800 disclaimer, disclaimers. This is not a normal kind of thing, all right? It is very arduous. Uh, you are going to be in a haram. Uh, so... Just, just remember that this is not something very easy. Uh, the Prophet I saw some even went by camel, of course. Uh, but uh, just, just keep that and bear that in mind. Uh, it is very long distances, inshallah. So if you're gonna do this, you're on your own. Uh, you know, calling us to fly, fly in a helicopter to get you from somewhere is unfortunately not possible. So for those of you who who are, are thinking about walking, that's on you. Uh, sometimes, all, even by the way, from the buses from Mina to Mecca are going to take hours because, again, how many buses are trying to go to the same place? The roads are closed. So what do some, some people do? Just get off the bus and they walk. Can I make the entire group walk? No, of course not. So people are generally going to be in the bus. Those who want to walk and get down, tell your Hajj guide, I'll make my own way. No problem. It's about an hour and 45 minute walk from the beginning of Mina. Uh, an hour, an hour and four minutes, depending on the traffic and things like that. So again, walking and all that, it's on you, but please remember you're on your own in that essence. Are we able to pick our seats now that we have received our tickets for Turkish Airlines, for Emirates Airlines, for Qatar Airlines? Yes. And if they don't work, uh, then inshallah call them. Uh, Saudi Airlines, Arwa does not. We've mentioned this. Are we going to collect our luggage and dead ourselves and pass it on to Al-Bayt? No, you will collect your luggage yourselves, uh, inshallah ta'ala, and place it onto the bus if you're going on bus or take it uh, on the other options that you have. So is a plan included with the SIM or do we have to purchase that separately? You will get a SIM, inshallah, into the ho in the hotel. It is included in your plan. So uh, Al-Bayt will organize when you will get that SIM. There will be telecom representatives from that particular company that will register you. You will then have to go buy a package, but you will get the SIM, inshallah. How many Hajis and B4000 are in custom flights arriving on the 10th? Allah 
Does everyone in C3000 get a Saudi SIM once they reach their... Uh, uh, for those uh, who was asking that question on B4000. Mahab, ask in your group and your hard guide, inshallah, we'll get that information to you. Or maybe some of the hijabs themselves will answer. Does everyone in C3000 get a Saudi SIM? Everyone, inshallah, in our packages. Salam alaikum. Salam. Are we able to just use our regular phone and just pay our carrier for roaming? Right? That's exactly what I'm saying. You can use your phone and just uh, update the plan to an international plan and it works. And it will save you a lot of things and you can use it throughout the journey. It's up to you, right? Uh, all of the carriers use it. And Alhamdulillah and the Saudis, for the most part, very good. But if you want to do that, it's a good option. You don't have to worry about getting a SIM. You don't have to do anything. But some of you, mashallah, you know, like the SIM is provided. So like that famous uh, meme video, right? A uh, person's like uh, barely awake and like having food in their mouth. They said, can't miss free breakfast at the hotel. <laughs> it's like the same thing. Like it's been given to you. So, you know, I have to use the SIM. Alhamdulillah. Depends on how you look at it, right? Uh, you don't need to bring necessarily two phones if you have a phone that is unlocked. Some of you, your phones actually can be unlocked by calling the carrier and saying, hey, I want to unlock my phone because you've used it so long, you've just never unlocked it. So when you call them, I want to unlock their phone, they'll actually walk you through the process of unlocking the phone. And if you can't get an unlocked phone, then you must get an unlocked phone if you're not going to do this. If you're not going to upgrade your international roaming carrier service for high-speed internet. Igor. I have a question about tawaf. When we are doing our tawaf, we'll be doing this as a group. Inshallah, when you are, uh, if you arrive, if you arrive before the group sets out for tawaf, inshallah, you will be with the group. If you arrive and you have the group has already done it, we will try to designate you with another group in Al Bayt that will inshallah go and do the, the, the umrah with you. But if you come at a time when neither of those are possible, which is, you know, it, it could be possible, then you will be able to do your tawaf, inshallah, on your own uh, because designating somebody in, in this massive operation is going to be very difficult. Uh, but again, we'll try to cater as best as possible, meaning we want you to go with a group to do your umrah, inshallah ta'ala, but we want you to be comfortable enough with the fiqh of umrah and hajj and the ease of doing so where you can do it, inshallah, there's no problem. It's not, it's not alhamdulillah difficult at all, but I'm just giving you the contingencies. Number one priority is the group. If that doesn't happen, then inshallah, be prepared for that. How do you do this? Will we all lock arms? We will never lock arms and hold hands that other people, you see them doing. This is absolutely against the uh, like the, the process of, 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 of doing tawaf. The fact that actually people do that causes more problems. Why? Because the natural position of the tawaf is supposed to actually create a sense of ease. There's not supposed to be pushing and shoving and locking arms and putting all the women in the middle. And then this is this is actually creates more problems because uh, that whole group. Then if what if it's going slow and the tawaf around them is going fast? What's it going to do? It's going to cause bottlenecking and pushing and shoving on the outskirts. This is a behavior that we don't recommend. What we recommend is that those who are next to their partner, their mother, their loved one, their sister, whoever, they can be in front of them when it gets a little bit crowded that they hold them in, in child just a little bit. And then uh, when it eases up, then they just you know walk normally in front of them a little bit to their to the right, for example. We'll go over this inshallah in detail, but there's no need for all of this. Uh, if they're, uh, we're going to be inshallah generally in a group. The women will be roughly together and the men will be like uh, around uh, that area, but we will not be locking hands or any of that. Uh, we will also inshallah plan not to go into crowded areas. There's no person, there's no like reward of going into a massive crowd and shoving your way into a uh, tawaf. And in fact, it just makes your tawaf longer and you're bothered even more. So we'll cover this in what we call tawaf pro tips in our getting ready for hive series. Do you, uh, do the same baggage rules apply for the people traveling from Riyadh to Medina through Saturday Islands? I already, I already said yet. Yes. So I'm going to exam. What about group flight transfer from Jeddah to Medina? We've explained that greatly in detail in the beginning. So please listen to the beginning of this uh, of this uh, recording. For we 3100 flight gets to Mecca around 5 a.m. and then travel to Medina, inshallah. So let's say we get to Medina by 11 a.m. We won't be able to check into the hotel until 6 p.m.? Absolutely. You will not be able to check in until 6 p.m. Uh, and if Al-Bayt can get it earlier, 
then alhamdulillah. But other than that, we cannot check you in earlier because that's what the hotel regulations are. Can we cut our own hair in Mina? Yes, the view that we take is yes. Some of the madahab, they differ on this. Uh, we, we take the view that you can cut your own hair, you can cut someone else's hair, and someone else can cut your hair. Do you trust them with scissors and the blade? That's your own kind of like, you know, level of uh, trust. If we brought hadith through Nusuk, will we know when the sacrifice is done? I'm still waiting uh, for word on that from Al-Bayt. We have not received word yet. As far as we know, that uh, if, you, if you've if done a Nusuk, then it is to be treated as if it's done. This is the fatwa of the great Hanafi scholar, Mustafa Zarqa. And he's Hanafi too. But you know, the Hanafi is different among these things. But again, uh, I'm just transferring you the fatwa. But we will find this out and let you know. What do you suggest if I miss the transfer to, group of a, to a group flight at Jeddah to Medina due to delay in immigration? You, inshallah, will not miss that transfer. I would not be too concerned. If you do, there's a emergency number. They will cater to you, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so you might have to take a bus. Or you upgrade and get uh, a... A private car that will be dealt with inshallah let's not go into the contingencies of what if i, I missed a flight and what if this that can be a million things inshallah don't worry please make sure that you're ahead of time and don't miss flights that, 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 if you miss a flight just to cover this now if you miss your initial flight you're responsible for booking your own completely new flight to get to uh medina or jeddah it's painful yes i don't believe that those uh group flight tickets can be transferred Allah wa'ala. Assalamu alaikum. Shaving or trimming is a hair allowed after Umrah if Hajj type is Qiran. Qiran does not do Umrah. Qiran does Umrah and Hajj put together. So what does that mean? That means you will do the acts of Tawaf and Sa'i. Uh, and then inshallah, when you're done with your Hajj on Arafah, okay, uh, and the next day is Eid, you can then come out of Ihram by cutting or shaving your hair. So they only cut or shave once. Whereas those who are doing Tamattu' they're doing it twice. Mr. Hila, should we pack enough clothing just in case there's no way to do laundry? I would not try to force that issue. There's a uh, laundry service people but yes, try to pack where you have enough clothes for those couple days. And if you need, you can always buy there more. I mean, it's not something like we're completely separated from any kind of civilization. There's an opportunity to buy if you need. Uh, but I would not overpack, okay? Uh, if you need to do a laundry service, there's people always in the, around the hotels that have these uh, laundry service cards. It'll take 24 hours. They'll go and get it, inshallah. Where in the Rafiqah is the rooming assignment? I see Tasbih Qibla Prayer Time Broadcast Pilgrim Guide. Uh, they say click on my account on the top. We are not, uh, as far as uh, legacy policy, we don't release rooming. So if you get the rooming from the Rafiqah, that's their prerogative. If so many people have gotten their rooming already, then uh, this is going to show up. Some of them have not. Our policy, we don't actually release the rooming, but Rafiqah may have done so. Assalamu alaikum. What about group flight transfer from Jeddah to Medina? What do you suggest if I miss the transfer? Where do you answer this? Uh, I'm like wondering about if some follow strict or conservative to at least to eat zabiha halal. Is there any concerns or accommodations for this example? We try to consume what is approved by the HMS that is halal monitoring service here in the US. Um, so, Sister Selma, to be honest with you, we don't follow necessarily uh, that level of strictness. I myself eat zabiha. As you all know, there's difference of of, of terminology of Zabiha and Halal, uh, but uh, uh, in, in particular in the Muslim countries, we follow the views of our of our teachers, uh, inshallah, that as long as it's uh, uh, been termed Halal within the certifying board of the country, then we go with that. If you uh, decide that you want to follow this uh, more stricter approach, then those individuals and people within that circle uh, have done that research for you into their level of compliances. I hope that's clear. Meaning, usually people who have who follow this level of strictness, uh, then they among themselves and their scholars uh, have already done that research, and they can find that out. We have not done that research, and we don't intend to do so. Um, and that requires you, for example, and let me just give you a clarity on why what level of scrutiny this requires. 
It requires the person to ascertain whether, as you know, meat uh, is imported uh, into Muslim countries or it's also uh, in this country. So if it's imported, many of these countries, many of these, uh, you know, uh, conservative uh, uh, view, they don't take any imported meat, of whether it's from Brazil, whether it's from uh, New Zealand or Australia, and some exceptions to New Zealand are made, uh, whether it's from Emirates or whether it's from whatever country. They say it's imported and we must ascertain that further. Okay, so all imported is gone. And that's uh, the majority of much of the chicken is imported, but there's also much of it is also uh, local. Okay, so then you find out if it's local meat. And then when it's local meat, they have to ascertain how they uh, slaughter the chicken, whether it's uh, uh, machine slaughter, which is accepted by a large number of Ulema and scholars, and this is the view that we take. Uh, and this is also a view of the Hanafi Madhab, and there's a uh, council of Hanafi ulama that allows it uh, in the first place, and that's the view that we follow. Uh, the machine slaughter, uh, uh, according to Sharia compliance, is permissible. Uh, so they wanted hand slaughtered on top of that. This is even more difficult than to ascertain whether the, the meat came from imported or local, because now many of the restaurants actually tell you uh, this is imported meat or this is local meat. Uh, so again, this level of strictness, uh, people who follow this level, they and their scholars usually do this kind of checking. So please ask within those circles, inshallah. We take the view that as long as the Halal Certification Committee in this country, to the Muslim country, has certified it, then we consider it Halal uh, for the most part, inshallah. The judge, Allahu Alam. I heard that most of the chicken in Saudi is not hand slaughtered. Well, I don't think so. Uh, is there a specific sim type or will the rep, uh, meaning I don't think so, I don't think that it's not hand slaughtered. Uh, I think that it this needs to, this this statement needs to be figured out based on statistics. So one of the things I recommend you all is that don't go by hearsay. I heard and this person said and this individual who's a mufti and a scholar or an alim has, has mentioned is not a proof and evidence in Islam. We have to be diligent and say, where did you get this information from? How do we know? Did they do a statistical analysis? So Allah Alam. And this is why Alhamdulillah, the ease is there's a group of ulama, they've uh, diligently view, uh, view, uh, uh, have uh, checked this and they take it as it's okay. And there's a group, a group of people that are also ulama and they don't and they don't want to eat this and they they want to ascertain uh, that all of the meat is local. And then guess what? There's another group of ulama that say no, it can't be just local. It must be hand slaughtered. It can't be machine slaughtered. So all of them are ulama. May Allah accept from everybody, inshallah. Is there a specific sim type or will the rep give us the one appropriate? For, by the way, just uh, if you want to understand the difference of opinion, I did one video on the getting ready for Hajj series. Watch it. SubhanAllah, how can three different views be all uh, correct in Islam? This is the mercy of Allah. Imagine only the people that did X view. They're the ones that are going to Jannah and they're the only ones that are correct. <laughs> Allah Azza wa has given us the blessing of multiplicity of reward in valid views. Invalid, not invalid, in the valid views. As long as the view is valid, you will be rewarded, inshallah, because you're following what Allah commanded you. What did Allah commanded you and I? Go to the slaughterhouse, ya hasib, and make sure that the guy is saying bismillah and giving the chicken ghusl and then turning it this way. And then it... that's not on us. Our job was what? Wallahi, this teacher told me that it has to be hand slaughtered. So I'm asking this person. They said it's hand slaughtered, so I trust that individual. Subhanallah, you even trust that at the end of the day, some person, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to give uh, importance to our deen by doing one thing. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. You ask the person of knowledge that you trust. You go with that view. That view is a valid view. You will be rewarded inshallah. Whatever that view that is. Why? Because all of these views, they're all valid. SubhanAllah, this is the, this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Multiplicity of reward in Islam. So uh, I want to emphasize to you the fact that there's so many different things. People get frustrated. There's only one Quran and there's only one Sunnah. Why is it? Habib, the differences of the views and interpretations happen among the Sahaba of what the Prophet ﷺ commanded or not as a mercy for this Ummah that they're all, inshallah, rewarded. There's also invalid views. Somebody comes and says to you something, you know what? All of this walking around the Kaaba so many times, just do it once. Khalas, you don't need to do it seven times. I mean, where'd you get this from? You know, I'm smart. I studied PhD in Yale or or uh, Oxford, and you know, Islam is is easy. This uh, this is invalid. So we just don't create Islam based on our own uh, rationality. Our rationality is used to understand 
what is valid and what is invalid. So alhamdulillah, all of this is ease and khair. Whichever view you follow, it's valid, inshallah. May Allah reward and bless you for it. Alhamdulillah, for those who are following this view, Allah uh, increase your reward, inshallah, and give you khair. And for those of you following the view that all of this halal because of the uh, commission of the, of the ulama that I said it's halal, may Allah increase you your reward for it and khair because you asked the ulama. Uh, sorry, I joined this meeting late. I uh, Did we cover the transfers, including the airport to the hotel? Yes, we did. So listen to the beginning and the recording, inshallah. How do we find our guides in Medina if, if this in the airport or the hotel? Depends on how you arrive. If you arrive via train, you will find them at the hotel, inshallah, uh, when you're constantly in contact with them by telegram uh, or breakfast or dinner or whatever. If you're arriving via group flight, they're already with you. If you're arri arriving via custom flight domestic, you'll be transported, uh, transported from the airport and you'll meet them at the hotel. So most likely those in custom will meet them at the hotel, inshallah. I requested for quad room to double. When will I be hearing the confirmation? There is no confirmation. Everyone who requested for a upgrade on the hotels, there is absolutely zero availability. As told to us by a bait guest, there are no upgrades because the hotels are completely sold out. If there were any upgrades, we would uh, cater to it. But unfortunately, there is none. That's what we have been told. Could we use the elastic knee braces or elbow braces for pain? Yes, you have to uh, pay penalty for it if you are a man. If you're a woman, there's no penalty. You wear whatever you want. You're wearing clothes. So if you're a woman, uh, you don't pay penalty. If you're a man, you pay penalty. You pay penalty on uh, uh, those uh, knee braces, etc., uh, which is what? Uh, uh, wearing uh, a stitched item made for clothing uh, requires one of three things. You, you're, it's your choice. Either feeding six uh, poor people in Mecca or fasting three days. Uh, inshallah, when you go back home, whenever, and uh, or or uh, sacrificing a sheep. It's one of these three. Your your choice, which one? Um, yeah. While in the state of Ihram, is it permissible to use a dental guard at night due to medical reasons without a penalty? Yes, dental guard has no. It does. It doesn't do anything. It's inside your mouth. Do we need to have a separate order for Hajj V Legacy for other family members who's in Hajj? If you made the order, you can choose the number. 6, 10, 100. The Prophet Sallallahu slaughtered 100 Hadi for his Hajj. 100. 63 he did with his own blessed hands. The rest of the 100, Ali Lali Alam slaughtered. So you just go to the legacy.institute backslash Hadi and then you just you, you choose. It says one sheep for Hadi. One sheep for Fidya, one sheep for Udhiya, uh, one camel, whatever. You just click the number of the uh, you want and then call us to check out. Will the hadith be tied to our name? It says in the notes you can write your name, but uh, Aslan, it's based on your intention. It's not based on what you write. You've already made hadith intention. But then you can write it in the notes if you like. Where do we keep our passports when we are in Mecca or Mina? You will not have the passports. Uh, Al-Bayt guests will have them or you uh, have it in your carrier uh, Al-Bayt guests will have them when you take them from Jeddah excuse me my apologies Salam my return date is June 20th from Medina I really wanted to change my return flight from Medina to Jeddah also the return date to the 24th I'm willing to pay for different uh, Neen or Nini I apologize for not saying your name properly you might have to direct this to the airlines if they don't allow you to change uh, the return ticket uh, now wait for the flight inshallah to take place meaning your first flight and then call them and saying I want to change my return ticket hopefully that works because I know there's there's some uh, there's some limitations on these group flights as you all know could we use pain patches on the knee or over other places pain patches and uh, uh, band-aids I booked the Hadi part of the Al-Bayt package. Do I get notified when the slaughter is done? Uh, do we get notified when the slaughter is done? If yes, for how? We will let you know, inshallah. If they do or they, do, they don't. We don't know yet whether they do or they don't. Uh, so uh, if, if they have already booked the Hadi for Nusuk, then uh, you take it as if you have uh, done the Hadi, unless we tell you. We're going to make an announcement in the announcements channel. Can we use or... Have a resource how to perform Hajj Qiran. Yes, Manzur will be sending that out shortly.
Okay. So we have, uh, again, this is this is important to, to, to cover. Imam al Nawi rahimullah, says that if one who is in the state of ihram has a wound and wrapped a piece of cloth around it and it was not on their head, they would not be responsible for a fidya. However, if this wound was on their head, they should give fidya for covering their head uh, because it's prohibited to wear anything in the head, be it a form-fitting cloth or not, but they will not be held sinful because they have an excuse. So this is why it's important to always ask uh, you know, our ulama and scholars. Imam Nawi, he mentions the difference between uh, if you have a wound on your head and you cover your head versus a wound on, your, so for example, your foot or you have a, a band-aid or plaster, you don't need to pay fidya for it because it's just simply... Uh, covering that particular area from blood or wounds, and it is not a, it is not considered, uh, it is not considered as lipsul makhip, wearing what is stitched. You might respond, well, what, what if it's stitched already? You have to understand, it's not stitching. Why? Because even in your shoe, in your uh, sandals, they're stitching. It's not about something being stitched. Like I have a belt that's stitched. Uh, that's not what's intended by stitched. Stitched means it's made for your body part, like a shirt. You know how it's 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 form fitting, so uh, this is very important. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking that question because it's given us clarity as well. Uh, the Hajj Kilan resource we will give you, inshallah. Don't worry. Will a powerful socket be available at Mina to charge a phone? That's a very powerful question. <laughs> how powerful? How powers? Oh, power socket, not powerful socket. I misread. <laughs> yes, uh, there is going to be a power socket. We recommend uh, you getting a small power strip. And uh, sometimes there are going to be people who already have power strips in that area, so that you can just share. Of course, I don't know the safety of putting multiple power strips together. Allahu alam, uh, but uh, it really does help in some essence when there's somebody with, mashallah, a longer power strip, and then people can just use that. Uh, uh, you can bring, as uh, mentioned, uh, an extra adapter, and what Adam mentioned, extension cable or a power strip, as mentioned. He's uh, British, so. Uh, he will use different terminologies, inshallah. How will our passport be tracked if we're arriving in Riyadh as an entry point? And your passport's not going to be taken in Riyadh. Your passport's going to be taken in Medina when you land or Jeddah. When will you announce the Hajj guide for A5000? We've already announced the Hajj guide for A5000. So let me let me just be very careful here with, the, with, with all of you. You must be in three groups. You must be in the Legacy announce, Hajj Announcements channel. You must be in the package announcements channel and you must be in the group chat for your uh, particular package. You must be in these three, okay? The reason why, you must read all of the announcements that we send in the announcements channel. That's made there so that it doesn't get lost in the chat. So if you're not reading every single announcement, it's not voluntary. You must read every single announcement that is in the announcement chat. In the announcements uh, channel, we've announced your Hajj guide, we've told you even code of conduct, there's all of these things. Everybody here must read the announcements channel. Can you remind us where you can book the legacy hadith? Alhamdulillah, Adil has sent to the pay thing. How will they pay? Please follow the instructions. Uh, As-salamu alaykum. So one more question for men. If you have longer hair, then usually it is a sunnah to shave uh, or get your hair short after Umrah or shave head after completion of Hajj. Can you uh, please uh, clarification? You can do one of two things. Number one, you can... Uh, Basically, get a, uh, 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 um, uh, like a buzz cut or a machine cut. So you get like a number two or number three when you finish your umrah. Okay? And then when it comes to hajj, you can shave it. Okay? So you've done umrah, like hajj tamattu, you can then uh, uh, shave it. And then when you do hajj, you can then shave it. Somebody said, I want to do more than one umrah later after this. Okay, so then just basically you will symbolically pass the blade over your hair if there's no hair that has been grown. So if there's if there's no hair, you symbolically just pass the blade over your over your hair, uh, over your head when there's no hair grown. It's a it's a symbolic way of getting out because there's no there's no hair to cut in the first place. For those who are bald, the same thing. I'm gonna Allah bless you with baldness so that you can uh, not uh, necessarily have to shave. So in that sense, but if there's hair, you must take from all of your head as the view that we hold. Uh, but the, the madahib are different, as you know, Shafi'i and uh, Ahnaf and the Maliki. And uh, the other, uh, obviously, is um, if you just shave every time. So you shave the Umrah, it'll take you about uh, one or two days to get some hair or more, and then you can shave again for Hajj. But again, it's going gonna, it's gonna, you know, to be chafing a little bit. So hence why we recommend to just do machine 
the first time for the Umrah and then do shaving for the Hajj. What's the reward? Prophet made dua three times for those who shave. Allah forgive those who shave. Allah forgive those who shave. Allah forgive those who shave. Every time they ask them, what about those who cut, Ya Rasulullah? So I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody with long hair, mashallah, they want to preserve their long hair. So Prophet said, Allah forgive those who cut. So one time. And the ladies, mashallah, you already get three times the dua of the Prophet anyway because you don't shave. The women, they gather all their hair and then you can gather in a bunch and then you basically cut this much, okay, which is one uh, like finger span here. It's called unmula, this uh, length, okay? Uh, or you can basically put all of your hair down and then from the, as you know, many of women get their hair layered, just from the lower layer, inshallah. You can give, you can do it yourself. You can, another sister can do it. Your husband can do it if you trust him with scissors. Allahu alam. Or hair, cutting hair. Thank you for taking time. Zakam Khan, it's our pleasure. Am I correct in just waiting until we are all together and with our guys to ask any questions we have? I want to make sure that even if I, if we don't ask questions, inshallah, we'll be taken care of by our, our group guys. Yes, ask anytime you want. Ask now, ask tomorrow, ask uh, the group guides. Whatever questions you have, we, number one, recommend you to ask in the group. Don't ask uh, questions that are general uh, in, in, in private messages because everybody messaging the group guide is just going to, number one, take time from the group guide in uh, answering questions that could benefit everyone. And maybe there's three, four, five other people that have the same question. Please make sure to ask your questions in the group. If it's a very specific nature, uh, because of, of something that you're asking about that's specific to you, specific to you, not I'm the only one that's facing this issue, specific to you, meaning like I have an issue with my passport, I have an issue with my rooming, I have an issue with my, etc. Logistics questions uh, that have deal with those of nature, message the TLI admin and uh, the Hajj guide, inshallah ta'ala, will direct you as well. Ask you questions. Uh, I tried to contact the phone number that came with my booking reference, and it was it's, it, it is the same number as the Saudi Airlines. I acquired about seat of uh, upgrade to business class for medical reasons. They told me that they are not able to do so. In fact, they said since this is a ticket, so they are not even able to view them to restrictions from the Hajj ministry. The only responsible for regular tickets about online directly from the airline. Is there someone else I can reach out to discuss this medical situation? Uh, unfortunately, no, because those tickets are not able to be touched. So when you're at the check-in counter, hopefully that can be dealt with. If there's anything that comes up other than this, then we will announce it in the in the channel. But as far as we know, they, they, there's nothing that we can do. Uh, and uh, like I said, the airlines themselves are saying that they can't do anything because it's a group flight, it's a Hajj ticket, etc. So when you actually check in, go there early and inshallah, see if you can get it. May Allah make it easy. Where in the Rafiq about is rooming assignment? On the top. Got it, thanks. They say it says rooming dates, but not necessarily who we'll be rooming with. Again, we mentioned this. When you arrive at the hotel, you'll get the rooming. For some people, they see the rooming, by the way, who they're rooming with. Allah on. The Rafiq app, mashallah, will update. There, will there be transportation provided to go from Muzdalifa to Jamarat? Of course. If you're on Majr al Kapsh package, you will go on train. If you're in the Mu'aysan package, you'll go by bus. Inshallah. One of the members of my party requested a wheelchair through Nusuk through bookings. At what point is that provided and can we request it? When you're at the hotel, inshallah. Can we request it only at will? As it may be not, necess not necessary at all times. No, it will be up to you when to use it. So it will be given to you and then and, khalas, uh, it's up to you to use it. Assalamu Is there no tawaf khudum for Hajj Tamatu since the Umrah has its own tawaf? Correct. Yes, but it's also sunnah. They call, they call it tawaf. Uh, tawaf al-qudum is not done uh, because you're going to be doing the tawaf for umrah for tamatta. So you mentioned we can cut our own hair as we leave a haram. Yes, but I also heard another opinion. This is, a, again, the differences of opinions exist. When you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you, of course, what my view is and the view that we follow from our teachers. The Hanafis, again, some of them, they say that you cannot. Someone else might do it. We do not take that view. We respect that view. It's a valid view, but we don't take that view. The view that we take is anyone can do it. You yourself. Because the whole point is that you get out of ihram. The Hanafis say, no, you're in ihram. It must be done by someone that is not in ihram. And again, that's a valid view, inshallah. What is a typical tip in riyals for a bellboy? 10, 20 riyals, inshallah, as uh, Dr. Abdullah has mentioned. Are taxis available at near Mu'isin camp for travel to Azizia? Uh, it is uh, from one of the access points uh, from the tunnels, but not from the uh, Mu'aysim camps. 
uh, it's not directly from the Moisan camp, so you have to still walk to get to outside of the area where there's a bus that goes to Qudai. Qudai is an area that's just outside of Masjid al-Haram, and then from there you get a taxi or use their busing system to take you straight to uh, Masjid al-Haram, underneath the clock tower. Sounds complicated? We will explain it, inshallah. Don't worry. Men uh, can wear briefs under Haram in the state of Haram? Absolutely not. If men wear briefs, they must pay fidya. And that is a choice of one of three things. They Meaning they're wearing briefs for what reason? Maybe they have incontinence. Uh, it's called sedas al bowl, which means they, they have droplets of urine that sometimes come out. If they wear briefs for that reason, it's fine because it's it's you know it's to protect themselves from from their haram being soiled, but they're wearing something that will not that will prevent that. They must pay fidya for it. It's not sinful because they're doing it for a reason, but there still is a uh, penalty for it. That penalty is sometimes the word penalty actually makes people feel bad, like you're being penalized. No, this is actually something you must do because this is the sanctity of the haram. So you're actually doing it because of that, not because you're sinful. The word penalty is not exactly fully sometimes indicative of the situation. So you either feed six people or you fast three days or you uh, uh, slaughter a sheep for every time you're in a haram. So if you're in a haram for umrah and you're in a haram for hajj, you have to pay two sheep or fast or, or feed 12 people. Same thing with wearing a mask. You wore a mask in, 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 in umrah because you're doing tamattu and you wore a mask in uh, hajj, you have, to, you have to feed 12 people. Okay. It's not just once. Every time you're in a nusuk, like uh, Umrah or Hajj, you must, uh, and you do that action, which is not allowed, then you must do it. So, they, so essentially, if he wears it, and he wears the towels on top of it, he just pays the, what we said, the penalty. And the Shafi mother, can I cut my own hair to come out of the uh, uh, haram? Inshallah. Karamat, I'm worried about my wudu and as this uh, and as this fracture I received or recently got on my pinky finger on my left on my left something coming on my left hand and my doctor is advising to wear for two months. Unfortunately, any issues with this? Um, you don't have uh, to do anything because we said that any kind of uh, like a bandage is fine. You wrap it; it's a it's like a wrapped piece of structure. It's fine. Is there any plan to take the group to Mashaq? Of course. Inshallah, Medina. You're going to be doing city tours and the walking historical tour of the Prophet's life around Masjid al Nabawi. So, my return date is June 20th. I really want to change. If you ask question twice, and then it'll take me time to read it again. Okay? Any questions regarding refund money? We have absolutely zero idea. Why? Because it's from Nusuk and everything regarding their system and their bank accounts and what they're doing. Unfortunately, we don't have any answer regarding that and when they're going to give the refunds. Allahu alam. See the Simon questions. We already answered. Respected Sheikh Hasid, thanks for your time. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much. What's the penalty for wearing diaper for incontinence patient? I just responded to that. One of three. You either feed six people or fast three days or uh, uh, sacrifice a sheep every nusuk. So if you're doing umrah and hajj, you must do it every every time. Our package is not including Qurani. How will we be able to include it? Uh, you go to legacy.institute backslash hadith. Provided link in the announcements channel. And our admin, by the way, when you ask questions, and that question has been already answered in the announcements channel, all they're going to do is link you to the announcements channel. Every person here must read the announcements channel. Every single thing that comes on the announcements channel, please read it. Um, also, some people are overwhelmed by the amount of things that are on there. Just to give you a heads up. There are a number of books we've put on there for your own purpose. You want to read those books? You're welcome to. They're just recommended books on spirituality, on hajj, etc. There's uh, videos that we've been doing on the webinar, a playlist of all those videos, a playlist of getting ready for hajj series that I'm doing, which is literally, I think the max video is 20 minutes, and we've done five so far, to make it easy. So you just read what you're absolutely obligatory for everyone to do is you have to read the three out, uh, PDFs one of them, uh, two of them are Al-Bayt guest PDFs. One of them is a Hajj packing list PDF that we made. And listening to the Getting Ready uh, for Hajj series that I have, five, five uh, videos so far, we're adding to it. And the chronology of Hajj uh, webinar. This is what you need to do. Everything else is recommended, as, uh, et cetera, um, that we have there.
Is there any option to buy? Is there any option to buy? Yes, there is, Brother Akshay. Just go to the website. Go to the website. So you'll find. According to Hanafi, are men allowed to wearing brief under ihram? Uh, Sister Parween. This is according to all madhabs. Allowed versus necessity and paying a penalty are, are different things. Because you have to do something, right, does not remove the fact that you still have to pay a penalty for it. So just if, if, if this is needed because of incontinence, then just pay the penalty. It's not a big deal, inshallah. You will not be considered sinful. Uh, Dr. Abdullah said it's uh, not allowed. We, this terminology should not be used. It, it's, it's not considered sinful because it's used for a medical reason. We don't use the term not allowed. We say that it must require a fidya. Please ignore if you know this already. If you, uh, if, if you host the sessions in Zoom webinar format, people can upload questions. Oh, good. We can do that, inshallah. That's a good question. Regarding power extension strips for safety, U.S. Fire Code does not recommend to use extension cables already existing temples. My opinion should be avoided. Okay, no problem. Um, for clarity, a single extension is okay. No problem, inshallah. You do what is safe according to standard. What I can I send money to Africa or do Hadi or do I have to do Mecca? Uh, Hadi, according to the majority, has to be done in Mecca. Your Udhiyah can be sent to wherever you want. And uh, what is the difference? Okay. Blood uh, of sacrificial animals, meaning sacrificing an animal, is, uh, is, is, is four types, okay? Number one, the udhiya. The udhiya is a sacrifice that must be done for one household, meaning the leader of the house does this or uh, buys it and someone else does it on their behalf. This is what we do every single year for Eid al-Adha. One person from every single family member, uh, one person from every single household uh, pays the sacrifice. And some of you, they do it what? They do it locally. They uh, do it in countries. They do multiple, like I do one or two or three or four in different countries. That's more than fine. That's called udhiya. Many of you culturally call it qurbani. You understand? Number two, uh, the um, uh, hadi. Hadi is done in Mecca. It's sacrificed in Mecca. Okay. So the beautiful thing is a lot of people don't know this, but the organization that, that collects the meat uh, divides that meat in the following. There are many refugees in Mecca that are receiving that meat. Refugees from Burma, subhanAllah. Refugees from Sudan. Recently, the Sudan uh, crisis that's occurred, there was many people that were here in Omar, they couldn't go back. So they're, they're stuck here, and subhanAllah, they're in a dire situation. So there are brothers and sisters in Sudan that are in Mecca and in the surrounding areas. They're receiving that meat, inshallah, and others as well, refugees in Mecca. People in need in Mecca. And then also, subhanAllah, the uh, uh, the uh, Islamic Bank uh, and uh, uh, other, with other organizations from Wizarat al-Zira and Tamiya and Mawarad al-Bashariya in Arabic, they actually freeze that meat and they send it to countries where they actually need that food. So subhanAllah, in the past years, our needy brothers and sisters who were, uh, who were in, a, in a position of need and, and, and didn't have food in Syria, they actually got some of this meat. And other countries as well, all over the Muslim world, uh, subhanAllah, they freeze the meat and they send it to them. So subhanAllah, there's actually a very diverse and very powerful uh, process of getting this meat to other people, inshallah. So they will uh, send the meat to those countries that are in need. But it must be done in Mecca. Then there's fidya, which you've heard. Fidya or dam is the terminology for the penalty that one must sacrifice for different things. Okay? And then there's aqiqa, which when you have a, a child, then uh, you fast. Uh, one sh uh, you fast you, you slaughter one sheep for uh, if it's a girl and you have two sheep if it's for a boy. Why? This is the deen of Allah and the Prophet ﷺ told us this is how the sacrifice is done. There's no external wisdom behind this other than it's a direct command from Allah. Just like Allah is telling you to pray three rakah for Maghrib, go seven times around the Kaaba. Why three and why seven? This is uh, this is a test of our of our submission. Sorry, brother. Why can I send money to Africa? We already we already discussed this. Uh, please clarify will the sin we get not come with a data package, it will not come with a data package. You must purchase data. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with this. Uh, he posted a brace and he asked if, uh, can I wipe over this? You wipe over it. So uh, if the brace is permanently basically put on there, it's a lot permanent, but you know, for a point of time where you can't take it off, then you uh, wipe on it and you wash the rest of it. Okay, you wipe. 
uh, if it can be taken off, you make wudu and you just put it back on. So it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to, if it doesn't need to stay there the entire time, then you can just take it off, make wudu and put it back on. Other than that, wipe over it. Doctor said I can take shower with it and all has small holes. Look at water. Can, oh, khas, then you don't need to wipe over it even aslan. It has small holes. Water can get through it. And you can shower with it. You're good to go. Alhamdulillah. Can a wife cut husband's hair? Yes. Inshallah, she's better than him cutting her hair. Allah Allah. Someone said it's a good bonding moment. Yeah, inshallah, you get to shave him. All of his hair. When we get to Mina camp, are the lists already made to be with intent or can we pick with a friend to be with? Inshallah, uh, that is going to be done later. Uh, so it says the minute tents are very large, you'll be with the whole group. It depends. It really depends, inshallah. So Majr uh, al-Kapsh will depend on Mu'aisim. So it, it will depend. Can we use paint patches on the knee or over other patches? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, that's, that's not uh, the case. Uh, you, you can. They can use paint patches, as we mentioned by Grandma Noah. There's nothing wrong with that. Women cannot wear a face mask or cover. So women wear a face mask. Uh, women or men the view that we take you can wear a face mask if you want okay uh, and if you do you still must pay fidya either feed six people or fast three days or uh, a sacrifice a sheep for wearing the face mask in umrah or in hajj so if you do it in umrah you do it once meaning fast uh, fast three days or feed six people or Sacrifice a sheep, and if you do it in Hajj, you must also do do it again. We've explained this more than once. Okay. Um, can I ask the the guide please not, not to answer the questions ahead of ahead of uh, me and Charles, so that we can make sure we maintain one fat fatwa at the same time. What is the ruling for uh, going to Hajj uh, when there are unresolved issues uh, with one of my siblings that I am unable to reach? Okay, I understand. Uh, when it comes to uh, grudges and differences among people, Prophet ﷺ has said that the one who gives salam first is the better person. Meaning what? The one who tries to reach out and the one who, the Prophet ﷺ has said that the one who tries to reach out is the one that is uh, trying to uh, maintain the ties of kinship. So uh, make sure that uh, if you have the ability to reach out, and uh, uh, mend these uh, issues, then uh, you should do so. If they uh, 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 don't want to respond and uh, are, are not someone that is uh, uh, basically responsive to what you're, what, you're, what you're even saying, not that they don't want to respond, they just, they're just, I don't care. I don't care what you have to say. Halas has been done with. You did your best. You tried. So the Prophet says you're the better person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold you accountable for this. But one thing we should keep in mind is that as best as we possibly can to try to mend relations and sometimes certain people, their relations are not going to mend. As long as there's nothing in your heart for them and that you're going to make dua for them and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them if they're wrong, then inshallah you have done your responsibility. We are 85,000 packages to Mecca to Medina by train. Is when you back to... Uh, brother, I don't know what your question is. You're going to go, if you're going from uh, Mecca to Medina, you're going to go by train. I'll be able to take care of you. Please clarify about the train. We'll reach Medina first and then go to Mecca. I thought train is part of our package. Train is only part of your package. If you've arrived in a city and you're going to go to the other city after you checked in the hotel. Okay? So if you're arriving in a group flight that's landing in Jeddah, but your package starts with Medina, you will go by train. But if you're li arriving in a custom flight, then you must buy a train ticket. So I bet we'll buy the, buy the train ticket or take care of the train ticket ahead of time for the group flights. If you're already checked into a hotel, are you asking how are you going to get from Mecca to Medina? You're going to go by train. If you're in Medina, are you going to go to how are you going to get to Mecca? You're going to go by train. This is clear, inshallah. Assalamu Will Legacy be booking Rodia? We'll have uh, group visits, inshallah. Group Roda. Visits, inshallah. Also, when purchase Hadi during bookings, via Nusuk, how will they be notified? We already said that we'll let you know. We have asked the Albayt HQ, we're waiting. Assalamu alaikum. Are we allowed to wear towels that stitch? Again, the towels and the stitching does not matter. 
Stitched clothes means clothes that is made for your body parts, like a shirt, like pants, like things like this. But the fact it has stitching in something, you can still have those things. Like for example, a belt, even, even some of the sandals have stitching. Does it mean you can't use sandals? It has to be, like, who in the time of the Prophet Isaiah had a perfectly molded croc like uh, back in those days. It was made from one piece of material. It's impossible. You know what I mean? So it's not about the stitching, the fact that it has something as stitching. The fact that it's stitched, meaning it's made for the uh, body part, like a like a shirt, like a pants, etc. Uh, I didn't get enough. Do I have to do hadi or the hair for hajj tamakku? You do hadi, my brother or sister. For hajj tamakku and hajj qiran, you must do hadi udhiyah is a sacrifice that is uh, done for those who are residents uh, for Eid al-Adha. Okay, Udhiya is another type of sacrifice. Do, does the Hajji have to do Udhiya? The answer is no. You're a traveler and the Hajji suffices for you. So Hajj Tamattu and Hajj Qiran must do a sacrifice called Hajji. Thank you for explanations. No problem, anytime. But how do we know Hajji will be done for us? I uh, When we brought our package on no side, it says Hajji Udha, which is very confusing. I know. The word, uh, uh, it said Adahi. So this is an Arabic term. They keep using, interchanging the word Adahi, which is the plural of Udhiya, which they're referring to as Hajji. Is it confusing? Yes, it's confusing. They should use the word Hajji. But again, these terminologies are sometimes made by people who are programmers. They're not uh, Sharia students. Okay, so uh, don't worry about what Nusuk said. That is a hadi, inshallah. They're just using the Arabic term for it. Udhah simply means sacrifice. Abahi means sacrifices. Anyways, uh, how will you be notified? We'll uh, check with Al-Bayt and let you know. Again, but the but the base is, as long as you bought it, then consider it as having been done. And if you follow the more conservative opinion, you're not going to know unless Al-Bayt HQ lets us know and we will let you know what they say. Salam. Jazakum for your time and answering the questions. How many people will be in a group and how many guides per number of people and how will we communicate with our assigned guides? Sister Fatima, you should be in the Telegram group where you are in constant communication with the Hajj guide, number one. Number two, how many per group? Uh, yet each Hajj guide is uh, dedicated to 47 people, that is, or up to 51 people, for the bus that's transferring them. Okay? But you have uh, two, sometimes three, Hajj guides per an entire package. Alhamdulillah. We've announced who they are. They're in uh, your announcements channel. You should have read every single message in your announcements channel, please. Is there a recommended method to pay Fidya? No, just pay for it. Oh, you mean if, if you have a choice between uh, fasting three days or uh, feeding six people or uh, sacrifice of a sheep? No, you are completely free to choose. Uh, will Legacy take us to visit the date farm in Medina? We'll be passing by a date farm, but no, there's too many date farms to visit. Inshallah, if there's an uh, opportunity for us to visit uh, uh, one of them, we will, inshallah, incorporate it in your city tour. So how do you have to be done in Mecca or I can do in Africa? Brother, we've said this like three times. You've asked this question three times at least. Hadi can only be done in Mecca. Salah. Mashallah for patience. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khair. Oh, that's it. We're at the bottom. Sister Rosma, thank you so much for your prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa and reward all of you. And if there's any other questions, I will stay for another one or two minutes, but we've gone over by about 20 minutes. Anybody have any further questions, you're welcome to ask anything. The following things will be, uh, inshallah, sent to you. Number one, a PDF of your detail of your package itinerary, inshallah, okay? Uh, and number two, a detailed arrivals guide. What should you do? Okay. Uh, if you're on a custom flight and a group flight, you're landing in Riyadh, you're landing in Jeddah, you're landing in Hajj terminal, you're landing in a normal terminal. All of that is covered in the detail guide. We're just waiting for it to be released by Bait HQ and you will get it inshallah. Anyone at any point that has questions, please ask. That's what the groups are for. If we miss it, we're human beings. Please just uh, say, hey, this question was not answered. We will answer every single question inshallah ta'ala. Uh, somebody sent me uh, privately. Please be patient if we ask the same questions. Okay, inshallah. I will be patient. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much. How much is the data package we need for the Saudi SIM? Uh, you're roughly looking at anywhere from uh, 65 
uh, 55 to 100 reals. It depends on how much data. So uh, you can get something like uh, uh, eight gigabytes uh, and you can get up to, I, I believe, um, um, 50 gigabytes. So it just depends on the data, inshallah. We will try to send it out actually ahead of time. But remember, one of the reasons why we don't is we don't want to promote one particular company. So, uh, you know, it's not, we want to make sure it's fair for all the telecom companies, et cetera. It's not sometimes good to do so. Sheikh Nur, do you have a recommended place in Medina from where brothers can buy comfortable soles? Yes, we will talk to you about all the places where you can buy soles, you can buy oud, you can buy atlar, you can buy dates, you can buy all that, inshallah, there. Even where you can do hijama, which is cupping, Islamic cupping. All of that we'll tell you, inshallah, and more. Is the SIM provider an eSIM? Absolutely not. We said there is no eSIMs in Saudi Arabia. Well, you must get a phone that is unlocked that can accept an eSIM or... You can just upgrade the international roaming package that can do high-speed internet. It must have high-speed internet. Can we buy Zamzam from Riyadh? I don't know why you would do that. Are you on your way back? Can you? Uh, you can buy it in Medina. At the Medina airport, there's Zamzam. Hello, Alan. May Allah Fatima for your kind words. Is water-resistant sunscreen okay? Yes, the, the water-resistant sunscreen does not mean that water can't touch your skin anymore. It means that uh, the, the, the sunscreen itself will not go away while, with water. So if you, have, if you have lotions that are water resistant, right, it's not creating an impenetrable uh, like layer on your skin. It just simply means that the lotion will not wash away. So what you're doing is when you, when you actually make wudu, you're going to rub your hands and it's going to uh, get to your skin, inshallah. And then it's going to leave the marks of the lotion, inshallah. So it's fine. It's not water repellent. The, the, and remember, the lotion is water resistant, not that it's going to create water impenetrable, impenetrability or whatever. Impenetra I need to focus. And uh, water permeating uh, into your skin. What items are provided by uh, by our big guests upon arrival? You will get, inshallah, a backpack, medium sized or small sized backpack. Uh, and inshallah, you will get an inflatable mat. You will get an ID card from your Hajj guide. You will get luggage tags, which are made for Saudi transfers, inshallah, uh, from your Hajj guide. For those who are on group flights, they will get those tags and ID cards before your flight, inshallah. Uh, uh, and then the, who are on custom flights, you will get it when you see your Hajj guide, inshallah, at the hotel. I used Airlo eSIM last year and it worked for data, but not phone. Well, that's what we're saying. So the eSIM for, for phone calling is not going to work. So you have a number of companies that will pick up signals, but it is not a local company. The eSIM will work from anywhere. Anything you put in your phone that has an international uh, uh, package can work. But is there an eSIM in Saudi Arabia with any of these telecom companies? The answer is no. So remember, the, the, the I study fiqh, so I have to be very, very specific in what I'm saying, right? Will there be a group visit to Rol? Yes, there will be. We love you, Sheikh. We love you too, Habibi. May Allah bless you. One more time, brother. We are reaching Medina three, B3100. Should we get our own transportation to hotel? I'll answer you right now. Okay. And B3100, you have a number of people that are actually going to be going by uh, flight uh, landing in Medina. Okay. If you land in Medina, uh, meaning your, your custom flight lands in Medina, there will be al bait guests that are available taking you from your, uh, your, uh, your from the airport to the hotel. If you're landing in Jeddah, al bait guests will put you on a bus to Medina. Okay? If you don't want to go on a bus, then you can get a private car and go to straight to your hotel. Or you can upgrade and get the train and uh, inshallah go to the hotel. All right. If you're on a group flight, you will be taken. If you land in Jeddah and need to go to Medina, you will be taken by train automatically. You don't have to upgrade a train or do anything. That's only for custom flights. I hope that this is clear. Is the Rawla booking easily accessible or tough to get to during Hajj? We already said this multiple times that it's a group booking, so you don't need to do anything. Are passports taken by Hajj guide upon arrival, or do we get to hold on to them? If you're in Medina, they'll be taken from you. If you're in Jeddah, you will hold on to them. And then Al-Bayt guests will direct you, inshallah. 
can you confirm that unscented chafing cream sunscreen okay for brothers during home? Yes, it's absolutely okay. And uh, Vaseline works great as well. How long before our flight time from JFK should we meet our guide? Uh, preferably a good um, two and a half, three hours, but the Hajj guide will tell you exactly when and where. Sabina. Huda, if someone needs to perform a second Umrah, they're permissible to perform Ihram at Masjid Aisha. Yes. Yes. Our B4000 will be mixed with French group. There is no one going to be mixed with the, mixed with the French group. We might be together in the in the Mina camp area, and we have our own area to do lectures. And they have their own area to do lectures, but you're not going to be hearing French uh, directed to you. It's going to be directed to their own people. We have our own places. We have our own areas, inshallah, to to hold those lectures. Uh, don't worry about it. It's uh, when you saw the French sign. That means there's another B four thousand one hundred that is for French people, or B four thousand for French people. So don't confuse those two things because these are global packages, but we have partners that speak in particularly uh, those languages. Okay, we're going to end right here, inshallah. Hopefully we've answered all your questions. Please forgive us for our shortcomings. And inshallah, if there's questions not answered, uh, and ask them in the groups. May Allah bless and reward all of you. Um, Uzma said, uh, do you hold on to your own passport? Yes, but you will be directed by al -Bayt guests. So don't worry about that. They will direct you. Because you, it's not just going to be you arrive and you get taken uh, in, in, in Jeddah that you will be uh, you'll be directed by the al guest team and you may have to hold on to it yourself. Last question. We want to stay in Medina one more day for Friday prayers. Is it allowed? Everything is allowed, but is it possible? You must uh, organize two things. You must organize your uh, change of flight yourself so if you can't do that now because it's a group flight, then you must, uh, when you land, once the flight has initiated, then you contact them and say, I want to delay this. Is it possible? Is it not possible? And secondly, if there is a need, I don't know if there is, for an additional hotel, that's on you. A big guest will not extend your hotel. You will have to do so or find another hotel and then extend your stay, inshallah. Will there be Arabic lectures there? Most likely not, but there might be other partners that have Arabic lectures. You're more than welcome to attend. So there'll be Arabic lectures by other partners. Remember, al Bayt guest is very big. We're just one portion. Do we have Arabic lectures? No. Do we have Urdu lectures? No. Do we have Bengali lectures? No. Do we have Farsi lectures? Pashto lectures? No. I'm, I speak all those languages, not Urdu and Bengali. But uh, if there's other partners that have Urdu lectures, for example, travel guide or ikhlas, you are more than welcome to attend. We will actually even tell you, and it will be announced, inshallah. That's going to made our children really great. Okay. We're going to end here. May Allah bless all of you. Jazakum khair for your time. And we'll, of course, see you all soon. More webinars to come, more information to come. Please read the announcement channel. Assalamu alaikum.